So this one is way late, and you've probably got a better chance of finding a decent picture of Bigfoot than you have of finding somewhere still screening this. But as my 10 day upload marathon enters the home stretch, I know I'd kick myself if I didn't talk about it. Plus it's probably on Blu-ray soon or something. Anyway, Colossal was one of the best surprises of the year for me, and I definitely put it in my top 10 of 2017 so far. Advertised as this kind of farcical, almost rom-com like thing with a trailer that screamed check me the fuck out, I'm a quirky indie movie, I almost didn't see this one. The idea seemed original but the execution the marketing seemed to give off was one of forced whimsy that I really didn't think I was going to enjoy. The only reason I decided to go is because before my gorgeous girlfriend was my phone wallpaper there was once a time where every day I'd wake up to the face of my first love, Godzilla. Now this movie had a giant monster in it and I swore to Big G that I'd see every movie I could that featured a big fuck off kaiju beast smashing through Asia. You know, to say that his people were being represented right. It was the last thing I could do to honour his legacy after the incident. I actually thought I was going to hate this. I never even really intended to review this one because, you know, no one likes to shit on small little off the wall productions even when they miss the mark completely and at the time there was way bigger movies to talk about but the second I saw it I felt like I'd found hidden treasure in sunken depths and immediately wanted to tell the whole world and then my computer broke and I went to Portugal and I just never found the time. So obviously finding the time now way past due but let's talk Colossal. Let me get one thing straight first, Colossal is not the movie it is advertised to be. Well, it sort of is and it sort of isn't. It certainly has that quirky fresh vibe the adverts gave off, but they kind of sold the impression that the whole thing was going to be like that and this kind of offbeat humour with a giant monster thrown in was the be all end all of everything it wanted to do. Which couldn't be further from the truth. This is an ambitious character study movie, like all of the best movies in the world the gimmick's just there to put arses in seats and act as a vehicle to more personal tales. This isn't a film about a big monster smashing up South Korea, it's a film about people. Flawed people, specifically. It's about those who let their flaws consume them and those who learn to overcome them. And what's devastating is it flopped hard. It didn't even make half its money back at the box office despite being one of the freshest, most original things I've seen in years. You know what this film should have done? Being a Netflix original. That would have carried some real weight for it. Would have easily got it seen. Anyway, that's just by the by. The point is, I really wish I'd done this review sooner, in case I'd managed to convince even a handful of people to see it. So consider this my redemption arc. It's not too late for me, dammit. We can save this one on home release. I really don't want to spoil anything in this film, because going in with no notion as to what it was just hugely enhanced the experience for me. So this will maybe be a little shorter than my other reviews, as I want to keep things vague. But I do want to talk about some of the stronger stuff, and a little of the stuff that doesn't work, because, you know, it's not perfect. Now it is. Except Godzilla. Firstly, it's super well directed. I haven't seen any other Nacho Vigilando films, but clearly he's a real talent. He's got a great eye for visual cues and storytelling. The basic premise, and no spoilers here, this is all in the trailer, is that a pretty dysfunctional and broke woman learns that somehow she is unintentionally in control of the random appearances of a giant monster that attacks Seoul. The way Nacho shows this discovery is done with excellent grandeur. There's a great moment that springs to mind where Anne Hathaway is in front of a massive TV depicting the monster, watching if it copies the actions she committed earlier that day. And the way it's framed, as it spreads its arms wide, they seem to sprout out the sides of the back of her head like black devil horns completely filling the frame. The little jump she does in cue with the movement genuinely makes your heart skip a beat. This brilliant shot so fantastically depicts such a massive dawning revelation for the character. It's as if in that moment the whole film is screaming at you, Oh yeah, she fucked up. The great direction is also aided by the fantastic performances of all the cast involved. Anne Hathaway in particular draws a superb human tale from the material in the expressiveness of her every victory and failure. And she fails a lot in this movie. Which is great, you know, I love to see people fail. That came out wrong. I just mean it makes me feel like less of a loser. Oh, that came out worse. What I mean is vulnerable heroes are the best because you can relate to them. Everybody is fucked up in their lives and seeing people on the screen fuck up and then watching them get their shit together is the kind of life affirming thing movies are made for. It's obvious when Nacho wrote this, I can't believe that's his real name by the way, I keep just saying Jack Black in my head, that he wanted to explore the kind of emotions people go through when they're at their lowest and how doubting themselves keeps them trapped in the cage with their monsters. Yeah, hey, yeah, hey, you see the metaphor now? Hey, yeah, smart guy, nicely done Nacho. A little cheesy perhaps, but that's how we like you. 
This is why my dad hates me. You can tell when writing it, he obviously had this little glint of an idea and was like, let's see how far we can explore this, because through this little metaphor, he manages to talk about some big things, like relationships, addiction, a little bit of depression, and other stuff that makes up the emotional core and conflict of the film that I don't want to get into because I really think you should discover that for yourself. I will say though, and I hope this doesn't give away too much, but this film has one of my favourite villains in years. This character is executed to perfection in every way and they carry a genuine terror with them whenever they walk onto the screen once the shit starts to go down. One thing that didn't work though was some elements of the ending. Bits of it were really well done, but there's little niggles here and there. My main gripe was they do reveal the origin of the monster, but it makes about as much sense as pineapple on a pizza. Before anyone argues in the comments, don't even dare try to defend that shit. Don't dare! And to be honest, I didn't need it. Sure, the concept that some random American is seemingly for no reason able to control a monster at the other side of the world might be a little hard to swallow, but once you get on board with it, you just go with the flow and then the explanation for why that's happened comes so late in the movie that you totally forgot you didn't know why it was there in the first place because you've just got so absorbed in the story and accepted it by this point. Then the explanation you do get only raises more questions. That's a flaw of a lot of storytelling actually. Everything needs a backstory. It really doesn't. I might be wrong on this one, but I vaguely recall Stephen King's The Mist, which was just about a mysterious fog full of monsters covering a city, had this bit in the book where everything just slowed down to go, and then the Arrowhead project failed, and we found out the monsters were from another dimension. And I was like, oh Christ, who cares? Then the film did away with that subplot completely as far as I can recall, and it was all the better for it. Explaining things takes away mystery. You gotta leave some questions for people. You know, I never went out to the original Star Wars trilogy going, that was shit. They never explained where the lightsabers came from. I honestly coped with not knowing. I know they've done all the backstories and shit for it now with crystals and stuff, but I don't care. It's flavor text. It means nothing to the story. The story should always be about the people. And if everything gets a backstory, where do you stop? It must be so frustrating as an author when people cling to stuff that just really doesn't matter the tale you wanted to tell. Can you imagine a conversation like that? It'd be like, oh, uh, sir, so in this fictional universe, where did those magic swords come from? Oh, well, uh, there was these enchanted stones, I guess. Oh, okay, but where'd the stones come from? Uh, there was a polar bear and he was magic and he magically summoned stones from, from space. Wow, really? Where'd the polar bear come from? Where the fuck do you think, dude? The mommy polar bear and the daddy polar bear got it on, alright? Polar bear sex, that's where he came from. Jesus, who gives a fuck? Tangent aside, I think the film works way more than it doesn't, and even with this hiccup and a couple other moments that fall flat here and there, it's just fantastic, to be honest. When it works, it's so unique in its creative approach that I just thought it was awesome. It genuinely really gripped me, I was smiling from ear to ear, I was on the edge of my seat when it got tense. It's a proper great under the radar flick and I encourage you all to go and see it. It could be a real cult hit. And please, buy the Blu-ray or something so I don't hate myself for not selling people on this one sooner. Hang in there, Nacho. We'll make your 10 million back in the home release. I'm sure of it, mate. That was a lie to make him feel better, I'm really not sure we're gonna get that kind of money anyway. Mm, getting close now. The countdown to July 12th continues. Eight videos down in eight days, man. Only two to go. Fuck, I'm excited. Anyway, if you want to support the channel and see the big announcement coming up, please feel free to like and subscribe. You can also keep updated via social media through the links in the description. And if you're suddenly in the market for a t-shirt subscription service, check out my sponsor, tblocks.com. They send you an official tea specifically unique to your interests every month. And if you enter the referral code GeekyGlassesTBX at checkout, you'll get 10% off your whole order whether it's for one month or the entire year. Anyways, that's all from me. See you again tomorrow as the countdown continues. And remember...